All right, so welcome back. This is part three of creating a phaser game from scratch. So in the last part, part two, we made the paddle move. You can actually see it right here. Look at that, it's moving paddle. Interacts with the ball that we made in part one. So now we're gonna make an AI paddle and it'll be on the right side of the screen and it's gonna move on its own. So let's get started. All right, so we are in our game.js, this is the game scene. So here we have our left paddle. This is the uh, player controlled paddle. And so now let's make a right paddle. Paddle, right, this.add.rectangle. And now, so our game is 800. Uh, so let's see, so we're gonna want, let's say 750. We'll still want in the middle at 250. And then the width, what do we have up here? 30 and what's that? Right, height and then white. Zero X F F F F F F. Fill color, fill alpha one. So there it is, we can see it. It has no physics, so we'll add physics. Nope, no physics. Physics.add.existing this.paddle right and we also want static so we're going to set that true is static true we see there's this blue line you may not see it so let's make that a little i want to get rid of this so we can see more of this code here so we're going to want let's go to main we'll set a background color it should be this and i believe let's just say we want gray so let's Look up a color picker here. Uh, let's see. Something, maybe something like this. And our hex is this. So we can, should be able to just do this. Let's see. There we go. This blue may be more visible now. We'll change this back to black later. It is right. So you see, it's not hitting. We remember from the video, the first video, part one, we need to add a collider. So this dot physics dot add dot collider, this dot panel right and the ball. ball. This is in the game scene. And here we go. We should see that it will collide. Boom. Okay, so let's see. Right now, let's actually set the ball to move at a more random direction. So let's see. Phaser dot math dot between between yes so we're gonna let's just say my, minus two hundred to two hundred and that's the x and then the y same thing all right probably don't want it to be zero so let's see. These numbers good enough? We'll do these for now as tests. We can make it better later. Well, actually, what we can actually do is this. So what we're gonna want, mm, we'll do it later. This is good enough for testing. Okay. So now we want our AI paddle to, of course, move. So this is paddle right. So this is us moving in here. So we'll, so what AI is gonna do is depending on where the ball is, it's going to move up or down based on the uh, Y position of the ball. So let's start. This is the update method in our game scene. And we need to be able to track the ball. So the ball is currently a local property to create, so we're going to change that. Make it this that ball. So now it's a class property. So let's change that here. Now one of the negatives of not using a language like TypeScript or a type system like Flow is that you don't get some errors when our local ball variable no longer existed. So we'll have to just be careful and make sure we change all those places. So let's just make sure we all the balls. And so it looks good. 
Now we save that still works, there's no errors. Okay. These I think is just from the refresh. I see the 16 colors. What is that? Let's just restart our server for a sec. And refresh. So what are these WebGL errors for? Could be that. Is it that? Comment it out and see. Not this. And now it's gone. Let's just keep an eye on that. The computers. You never know what the hell they're doing. Okay. Back to trying to move our paddle. So now we have the ball, so let's see. What we want to do is move the AI paddle when the ball is moving. So if this that ball, that Y, I care about the ball Y, is so let's okay. So if it's below the paddle, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to call this diff, and we're going to do this dot ball dot y minus this dot paddle right dot y console dot log diff. So we're just going to log that out and see what that looks like. So above is minus. You can see that ball is going to go, and it's positive. Okay. So let's stop logging. So we know if diff is less than zero, that means the ball is above the paddle. Else, uh, let's just say else if, because it could also be zero, is greater than zero. Ball is below the paddle. Okay, so now if the ball is above the paddle, we want to move the paddle up. This dot paddle right dot y minus equals 10. And then this dot paddle right dot body dot update from game object. And here we go. We'll do the inverse when we're going down. Let's see what this looks like. It's moving, but it looks super ugly, right? Very, very jittery. Boom. Okay. What we can do, so if it is not less than zero, but let's say less than less than ten. Greater than ten. That does not. So we don't want it to move at every little difference. Let's see, we want to smooth this out. I'm going to do, so if the absolute value of diff is less than some amount, let's just say 10. We're going to do nothing. This, 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 okay. See, it's a little bit better. And we can, in fact, uh, make this better if we would accelerate to the ball. We can maybe, maybe just change this and see how that looks. Yeah. It's very jittery. What we can do is actually accelerate the velocity to max velocity instead of just setting it to max velocity. Let's, let's give that a try. Let's see. We're just going to make Let's make uh, 
Well, I guess we can actually, this is ES6, we can just do, we're going to call it paddle right velocity. And it's going to be a phaser dot math, I believe, dot vector chip. We'll just start at zero. Let's see, what is this? Let's put this into the scene init. So scenes also come with an init uh, method that we can use. Now, okay, so we have it here. So instead of that, what we're going to do is this dot paddle right velocity dot y. So we're actually going to always add. Which of course means right. So this we can do after the fact, and then what we're going to do here is simply change the velocity, the paddle right velocity vector that we created. So this thing. So we're always adding because this may be minus. So if it's minus and you add a minus, you're you are taking away. Plus minus is minus, and minus minus is plus. Okay, so what we're going to do, just to make this work like it did before, so we did, so it was going above, this would be minus 10, this will just be 10, so we should see no change in the actual um, effect as we do not, the ball was simply moving now faster, so you see that jitter more, but let's just do another one. Right. Fantastic. So instead what we're going to do, we're going to make this, let's say minus 1 and 10, and then if this dot, dot i is less than minus 10, we are going to set it to minus 10. So it doesn't go over. I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom here for this minus 10. See, that's a bit smoother. So let's try some different numbers. Look on a second here, this should be plus. All right, that's too slow. Let's try back one again. Copy and paste always give you some problems from time to time if you're not paying attention. So let's see. So I'm just going to make uh, AI speed. I'll just call this, I'll call this, let's write three, so that we're not updating two things at one constantly. There's different uh, better coding practice that we can be doing here that we haven't done yet. And we'll do that in a later part to show you. But here you can see now it is much smoother, the AI paddle. It's not jittery. So that smoothness is effectively making a acceleration. So velocities change in X and Y over time and acceleration is change in velocity over time. So back we are changing by three, so here negative three units over time until we get to negative 10. So that's our AI paddle. Uh, be sure to come back in part four where we're going to do some scoring with the ball and have it fly off the edges of the game.